Greetings and welcome to another Old World Exploration. In this video we are going to be taking an in-depth look at the city of Denver, Colorado in the US. And as you can see here, all roads seem to lead to Denver in this region. A uh, very strange history uh, with Denver, I, th I think. Uh, 1858, a uh, gold rush, a very short-lived gold rush takes hold in Denver. Um, explaining the reason why settlers end up there. Um, 1863, they have a great fire. Most of the buildings are burned down. Here, let's have a look. I'll read some of it to you. It might be easier. All right, there it is, the Pikes Peak or Bust Gold Rush. Um, devastated by fire, 1863, a year later, a flash flood swept away many buildings. Um, and then you have the Indian Wars going on in the area, we are told. Uh, the big one um, and the reason the um, reason for the expansion of the city of Denver into what it is having to do with the railway. Now they got snubbed on the Transcontinental Railway as it runs through Cheyenne, Wyoming, right here. And so the, as the story goes, um, within years of the Great Fire and the decimation of all the buildings in um, Denver, um, the citizens pooled their money and decided to build a railroad to uh, <laughs> to that uh, that link up on the Transcontinental. Uh, so citizen funded. Not long after, all of their uh, possessions would have been burnt up in a fire in all of their buildings, and of course that link up with the transcontinental railroad becomes the explanation for the boom in the region here we see a resulting economic boom increased the population from 5000 in 1870 to 100,000 in 1890 within 20 years we have a ridiculous growth in population uh, again echoing what we see in so many other places um, the bell curve i guess you could call it of population growth look here oh, with increased to 10 people in, a, in the first decade here. This would have been during those years where they were funding that railroad. And then all of a sudden the railroad's in and we're good to go. And people just start flying in there. Thousands. Thousands daily, I would picture that, all through here. And then you can see how the growth just slows with the percentages uh, when you compare it to this area. So as I often say in my videos, uh, what I think we're looking at here is a very poor explanation for um, something that once existed uh, much longer or further into history than we've been told and we're getting a transplanted version of history a false historical narrative um, a starting point a wiping of the slate clean uh, much like you see in many of the cities across the continent uh, you see places like Seattle Vancouver Calgary not far from Denver but uh, again across the continent so the story repeats itself here we have the governor James W Denver who apparently the city is named after and a Ned Wincoop also supposedly one of the founders so let's have a look at uh, some of the architecture actually before we do we'll go back to um, the silver boom so during this time period 1870s 1880 silver becomes more important economically than gold Mining fortunes created almost overnight, and an opera house was built. We're going to take a look at that one. But this period of opulence ended in 1893. You wouldn't think so, the way these buildings were going up. Wait till you see a very large file we have in store for you today. So It's definitely going to contradict what we're seeing here. Oh, look at this. Banks failed. Smelters shut down. Silver kings became paupers. But thankfully, that railroad had been put in there. So all sorts of things like farming and cattle. Um were able to take hold. Also breweries. Quick brief mention of breweries. And I would say that would that whole story is a bill of goods that we're being meant to uh, swallow. And uh, what we're going to be looking at here now is uh, the remains and what's left over of a city that's been around much longer than we've been told. And uh, before the wool had been pulled over our eyes, all of this would have been intact i suggest here we have chamber of Com commerce with a, a start date of 1884 thanks for giving us the date on the building now high school you're going to see a lot of high schools in denver 
looking very old world like this they're calling West High School and of course no shortage of hotels you'll notice many of my black and white photos coming from uh, I would say the first three or so decades of the 20th century so I remember, remember that timeline uh, and how short that window is for development really here an early photo looking uh, you're going to notice too in some of these photos the infrastructure looking and feeling much more well established and older than that uh, several decade window that you would have allowed for um, for all of this to have taken place of course the streetcar a prominent in old world Denver there you see it again and you also see of course the uh, brick style roads which no doubt were systematically replaced or paved over high school the Denver Club looking very uh, Romanesque Richardsonian Romanesque style castle I would say yeah and of course the house showing you the same but this one giving you sort of evidence of uh, potential damage but I think maybe what we're seeing here is some sort of bulging just my estimation. Old Denver, turn of the century. No shortage of churches as well, of course. You have that sandstone look, you're going to see that. No aging going on here too. No doubt this is, even by their narrative, this is a uh, 120 year old building. Uh, and looking very, very spiffy, I, would, I should say, as far as uh, how crisp that looks. And I don't imagine that's from upkeep. I think there's a uh, longevity to these building materials it doesn't allow them to age in the same way much of what we use ages these days here in north side high school very obscure couldn't find a photo of this one interesting building and there you have the streetcars struggling through the snow denver having quite a snowpack actually uh, i checked it out about 60 inches a year even higher than the snowpack i get here um, in northern canada which i found was interesting Temperature is a bit more moderate, but uh, again, you have to allow for these types of weather conditions when you're factoring in the timelines for building these structures. And again, the, the uh, w right now we're carrying a bucket with all sorts of holes already poked into it, and we're just poking another hole in the bucket. It doesn't hold water. There's an old house in Denver. St. Mark's Church, looking very mud flooded. And there you have uh, the, one of the old train stations and behind the gate here. And of course the streetcars and again not looking like a Wild West. I think that's the image of Denver we're given is sort of a picture of a an image of a Wild West Cowboys and Indians narrative. Um, but this really flying in the face of that I would say what we see here in historical with the historical evidence that we can find another school in Denver oh no shortage of theaters as well so also suggesting a very cultured people um, people taking in these shows and these opulent buildings the Albany Hotel supposedly uh, built 1885 uh, demoed in 1976 we are told I do have this as well which is a rendering of the Albany Hotel with the, with more of the uh, tower tops so if I go back to this one you can see that there's no evidence of that there so uh, evidence of uh, uh, erasing <laughs> evidence of evidence erase, erasing the old world <laughs> Um, why do they always have to do that? De, uh, de beautify these buildings. I think they're trying to uh, hide the old world look as best they can. The auditorium. What a structure. So built in 1908. Remember we have the uh, that silver boom dying off um, right around the turn of the century. 1903 I think it said. Um, but the population continues to grow despite that. 
um, d and despite there being really any raw industry or reason for Denver to be um, growing at the rate it is architecturally let's say this is really quite the structure something you'd see somewhere in uh, Prague or something like that uh, of course having its own pipe organ look at that thing Wow really not making any sense for the city of Denver as we know it neither is this we have the Daniels and Fisher stores company famous tower decided they would build a tower in the old world fashion the Boston building coming right out of that time frame no doubt 1880s 90s so many structures built um, in that time frame and then here we have a modern day picture looking up and then this gives you again a, a feel for what we're dealing with here as far as architecture goes Union Depot the mining exchange building opened in 1891 raised in 1961 62 so did it take um, longer to tear it down than it took to build it? We have so many of these uh, explanations only really telling us when it opened or when it was built. A very thin historical narrative. And an old postcard showing us the way life used to be. We are told before all these buildings were thrown up in a heartbeat. Yes, I do question the narrative, all of it. I think there's much more to the story of our past here that we've been kept from. Speaking of, I thought this one was interesting. Brown Palace Hotel, where the world registers. This would be an old travel tag that was uh, put on luggage coming into this hotel in Denver. I thought it was interesting, the makeup of the map. What do you think? And of course, we have all these structures and they'll be attributed to places like, or clubs, gentlemen's clubs, Knights of Columbus in this case. You'll see more. Here we have the Maltese Cross, implying Knights of Malta having a presence in the region. You'll see more evidence of that as we move forward. I really wanted to find a better uh, photo of this one. This is really, really, really showing us evidence of old world. We're really to believe that all this went up in that short period of time with those long winters and heavy snowpacks. Hmm, it's a stretch. It's very, very stretchy. One of two Immaculate Conception churches you're about to see. And 1865, this is right after, apparently, right after that fire, 1863 fire. Now, this doesn't quite make a lot of sense. Are, are they depicting what it was before the fire? These still look like brick buildings. Or are they saying that these things were thrown up in that two-year period post-fire and flood? Something not making sense, as usual. Beautiful, beautiful high school. Who wouldn't want to go there? Principal's office located right here in the top. And one of the many obscure hotels that are difficult to find any evidence on. Here we have the Adams Hotel with the dome. But before all that, the first house in Denver apparently looked like this. And these are generals. These are distinguished gentlemen, and apparently this is how they knew how to build. In 1858, in the original Pikes Peak Gold Rush, guys couldn't even put a, a slope on their roof. Well, the, those winter snow loads would have a lot of trouble. This roof would have a lot of trouble in those winter snow loads. So what do you think? Hogwash? Hogwash. A dry goods building, of course. Built in the old world fashion with the arched windows and the multiple stories. Christian Science Church. It must have been a column factory nearby. Unless they shipped it all in, what do you think? Those trains must have been humming. This wasn't just happening at Denver, this was happening at the same time everywhere. So where are they pulling all of these building materials from? And then shipping them all so, so swiftly to get all these buildings up in such short periods of time. 
here's we have the Odd Fellows Hall. Yet another gentleman's club. Nothing sinister about any of those. Just a place for gentlemen to gather. Some of the old postcards I find interesting too. This is one. Uh, this one kind of jumped out at me. Do these look like women to you? Is there something up with this? I don't know this one especially. But uh, oh no, I think we're uh, we're being uh, we're being led on with a lot of this historical uh, mumbo jumbo. I think it's hard to trust much of it. So so we question it. A very a very devout religious people in Denver. This is why all these churches were put up in the fashion that they were. But you wouldn't think it looking at these guys sitting on the donkey, would you? <laughs> no doubt members of the Gentlemen's Club. The Kaiserhof. Another hotel. Scrubbed from existence and history. And of course, in 1880, during that silver boom, they had to put together a post office in magnificent fashion. This postcard from 1906. Very built out looking Denver. This looking like what we would expect from that period of time in Denver. Of course, a horse drawn rail car. This is the horse that does all the work just until the electricity gets put in. The anticipation was there. And all the infrastructure was put in place, but the horses had to do the work until Edison did his thing at the World's Fair in 1893. There's the Hall Hotel looking very dignified. And before that, we had the Arapaho Indians making meat with not a sight of any sort of building in the background. There's your evidence that these buildings didn't exist. It shows us on the postcards. Unity Church. Yet another beautiful looking sandstone red brick style church. They have the Carter Museum with the columns and very low windows. Post office again because that first one wasn't going to cut it. That was built in 1880 and it was getting much too old and run down by this period of time, several decades later, so they had to put in much much bigger post office, not nicer, much bigger with a lot more columns. And then the public, public library must have been by the same people because, and they must have had a lot of columns left over. Maybe they saved money. They had a lot of columns left over and they saved some money and put that into uh, another building. What do you think? Makes sense? How else would you explain it? Hey, here's let's play a game. Throw in your comments the most absurd explanations for some of these. <laughs> if you're up for it. I'd like to hear what you think. Another museum. An old stone opera house, 1878. Old and made of stone and built on a slope. Very few buildings I know of will have the front face of the building on a slope like that. The road here coming up almost over the door. I wonder if it's a step down to get in that door and several steps up to get in that door. Temple Court building. Not sure what it's for. Maybe it's a hotel. El Jebel Mosque. Not the only El Jebel Mosque. You'll see another one. Here you have the Shriners symbol, the Gentleman's Club. Very secretive, these folks, with their fezes and their oaths. E&C building, old world. And all these people on a sightseeing tour. Very sinister feeling, with the all in black, um, covered up. And, and what's, uh, what's powering this? Were these electric? Where's the motor? pre-gasoline well maybe not pre but something doesn't make sense here you're seeing a lot of these two here's another one are these gas powered I don't think so anyone know any more about this uh, this part of the story let me know of course when they reset history they want you to um, become blind to the truth and we do that 
in many ways, and one way is to encourage the consumption, overconsumption of alcohol. And here's one way to do it. And tie that in with the uh, Cowboys and Indians narrative. Meanwhile, we've got castles going up in the 1880s, and which are just uh, personal residences. And of course, the surrounding region of Colorado or Denver, sorry, in the Colorado area, um, really could do a whole other video on that. This would be the Castlewood Canyon State Park. Um, old dam within that park. Uh, supposedly early 1900s this was built. You, you tell me. What do you think? And you have all sorts of this uh, anomalous um, geology in the surrounding area. And you, I could really do a whole video on the in more of my maltology um, frame of mind on the uh, surrounding area of Colorado. And I did touch on that in my Four Corners video if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Middle school. Right? Not quite for the senior senior kids yet. They just get a something not quite so spectacular. Well, or is it? <laughs> That's pretty spectacular. Who was building that in Denver? Come on. North High School. Not to be outdone. Not to be outdone. The little, uh, what are we going to call those finials? We're at the peak of these interesting shaped roofs. Another old high school construction photo, this one. So don't come on my videos and tell me they didn't have any construction photos. There's one right here. There's plenty of construction evidence. Here's one right here. <sighs> yeah, that's sarcasm, by the way. Um, oh, a new city hall. We're told, having a bit of an old feel, feeling like a lot of those high schools. A junior high, another, another high school, nice cupola up there, detention area up there, open air detention area, so you get cold when the wind blows through and the snow blows through, but as punishment. Looking similar to a previous um, high school we looked at, but no, this is another one interesting what do we call it is that a boxster that's very interesting as well a lot of bicycles up front here all right there's the tivoli brewery 1864 founded built 1864 that doesn't make sense might have that wrong but i don't know what do you think we've got the uh, basement windows We've got several stories. Beautiful roof. This uh, reminding me of uh, Budapest. Many of the roofs in Budapest. And you got some funky looking tech up there. And of course the dome cupola and the stack. Something about these old stacks as well. Look at the look at the way that's put together. Isn't that spectacular? Who are these skilled craftsmen moving to Denver at this period of time? Coming out on the train to make a life for themselves with their skill and their, their tools. <laughs> oh, another high school. Just when you thought there wasn't enough high schools. The population was booming so much they had to throw these up. They had to educate children. Basement windows, excavation, same old. All right, here we have the Central Presbyterian Church. Um, here we have it today. Oh, here we have it today. And this goes back to what I mentioned earlier on in the video where these sandstone blocks don't seem to age. Uh, that red maintaining its color. Really spectacular. No, no issues. You can see here too, no issues with a compromised foundation or any of that kind of crap. I always hear those stories as explanations for why they tore many of these down in the uh, 60s. The 60s was a big teardown. It was the progress, progressive uh, movement really taking hold. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I think these are very, very well built. Very well built. Uh, this would be Cheeseman Park. Bit of an amphitheater look going on there. Also having some interesting patterning going on. G 
Cheeseman Lake and Dam. Check this out. A blockwork dam. 1926 this photo from. Um, I think the narrative also says this one went up uh, early 1900s. Here's a modern day photo just to give you an idea. What do you think? So they're building all these buildings in the city, but they must have had, what, how many people do you think they would need to build this? Damn. Does that make any sense at all to you? Hmm. Anyway, back to the, the small shacks of, of Denver. Oh wait, that's not a small shack. That's an old city hall. I do have the date on it. Let's, let me just blow this up. I'm sorry if you can't see it. There we go. Supposedly built in 1883 in the height of that silver boom, torn down in 1937. What? Really? Oh man. I can't believe they tore that down. Well, I mean, I can, but. Yeah. Hmm. Scrubbed. New City Hall. Is it new? All oh, this looks preordained. The way it's all laid out. County Jail must be the cells down here by the by the ground. And the old courthouse. Hmm. Also being built right around the same time as that city hall. 1881 to 1883. It only took them two years to build this in the 1880s. That must have been the silver mining boon that explains this. Hey, brought in all. They were able to afford so much money coming through there. They were able to afford to build this. That's what we're expected to believe. In two years. Pre-power tools, right? Oh, come on. Raised in 1930. Of course you're going to tear that down. By 1934, this thing must have been decrepit. At almost 50 years. Of course you're going to tear that down. Hmm. Tragedy. Tragedy and a comedy all wrapped into one. Saving Central Savings Bank... You get the curved corners and the streetcars. Look at that, an elevated streetcar platform in 1915. Very, very busy in the, in the uh, city of Denver back in this time period. But not so busy that they weren't able to take in a bit of entertainment. This one of many theaters, the Denver Theater, we're told. Union Stockyards Amphitheater made out of brick. Very difficult to find anything on this as well. Did find that though. Oh, 1916. Looking very old world. And we have a bird's eye view map. You will see another one. These are always really nice uh, sort of peruse. 1908 showing us all the architecture already standing for this period in time. 1908. We'll see one from 1889 a little bit later on. And again, a reminder of what it all looked like really only several decades before all these buildings were thrown up. Here we have the wagons on one side and the teepees on the other. Mm -hmm. Reminiscent of uh, much of the uh, Hollywood um, perception we've been... Uh, that's been implanted upon us, let's say. That's what we're expected to believe. Not this. We're not supposed to think of Old World Denver, 1850s, 1860s. This is supposedly 1880s Denver. Does this look new to you? Does all this infrastructure look new to you? Look at the, how worn the sidewalks. Never mind that, though. Let's enjoy a show. Here we have Mickey presenting us with a show. Thanks, Mickey. Yet another gentleman's club, the Elks Club. Had to have a dome in the front entry there. So what do you think? Quite a large file, and I'm going to go through it all. I want to present everything I have for for you because there's so much to offer Denver having so much to offer may have seen this one in a previous another high school 
the El Jebel Temple. Uh, Knights Templar, Denver, 19... I think it's 13, maybe 15. Very interesting. The El Jebel Temple. This would be Shriners... Who built that? Somebody, whoever lived in Denver at the time must have been really good at these. So many of them. Looks like the Empress Theater, 1907-1969. Equitable, build, equitable building, very early timeline, horse and buggy, streetcars, full effect. But you have this monster. What was that, octagonal front entry area? And then this giving you an idea of what that looks like on the outside in a modern day photograph. So just take a look at the building materials, the texture, the weight, the smoothness. And take it all in. Uh, this is, I think, the top from the electrical, electricity and light building or something like that. I think these are all lights. Reminding me a bit of the uh, ooh, Guarantee Building, I believe, in uh, let's see the Syracuse or Buffalo. I did a video on it. Guarantee Building. Fire Department, old Fire Department. Oh, we saw the Fisher Building already. bit of a snapshot of some of the uh, geology in the surrounding area. Um, very interesting geology and if you get into miltology um, really it's catastrophism. Um, it's the old way of thinking about the history of the earth rather than the um, uniformitarianism which took hold right around the same time here in the 18 mid-1800s just took hold of our consciousness really and was was pushed in the schools through the churches um, despite the fact that it went against what the churches originally believed um, they were all on board to make this transition here we have the Immaculate Conception Cathedral and now we're given a nine year window for this to be built but who again who's building this in Denver at this time. There's your pipe organ, cymatic window, uh, healing centers, the old hospitals I call them of the old world, um, preemptive um, health care. I think they use sound to stay healthy and stay vibrant. And there is a modern day view of that cathedral. International Trust, more columns, column factory, working overtime. In the Kittredge building, we are told built sometime between 1890 and 1900. Still within that silver boom, I suppose. And again, you get that texture. See that textured, uh, what we're called sandstone, sandstone block. Theater. There's that library again with all the columns. And in case you're wondering, erected in the year of our Lord, 1909. And dedicated to, not sure, advancement maybe. And learning, advancement and learning. There you go. Uh, so this whole point of all of this historical narrative that was uh, foisted on us was to enhance our learning, advance our learning, progressively, of course. Here's a library at the university. They call it the Mary Reed Library. Beautiful old world brick with some concrete molding. Oh, there they are. Hmm. Yet another club for the gents. Hmm. And not far away, you get, again, you have strange formations, geological formations. 
uh, I would uh, estimate that re remnants of uh, some sort of cataclysm and what we're looking at is potentially the remains of uh, old structures. There's the Orpheum, opened in 03, demolished 1967. 60 year window for this baby. Must have got tired of uh, the vaudeville shows. Paramount Theater. The Patterson Building, sometime between 82 and 1900. Who knows when? Just some time in between there. That's what we're told. And then you have a theater being raised to the ground in a very early time period. So this looking very early 1900s. And how old is this? Well, we know it can't be any more than 30 years old. Uh, or 20 years old even. 25 years old at the time. But old enough apparently for them to tear it down. Of course, it had to have a sanatorium nearby. Here's an aerial view of the sanatorium. That would have taken a bit to get materials out there to build that, wouldn't it? Let's take a look at the post office again. Really, really. I really like this one too. Something about it. The symmetry. Feeling top heavy. I don't have any information on this, but no doubt some sort of institute of learning school type building. Very, very ornate. Um, cupola style center for the building. Let's take a quick look at the Red Rocks Amphitheater in Colorado. If we look closely, we can see it's all bricked out into there. And right up to the sides. And you have this very, very strange formation. And looking at it from the back, looking down on this area, very, very interesting rock formation. Very consistent lines. Yet another hotel. Cosmopolitan Hotel. A sneak peek at the state capitol. Again, that column. Column factory pumping out the columns. This will be the front entry of one of the high schools we've seen, just to give you a modern day view. Again, this is how many years of weathering, and we're not really seeing a lot. So these things really do stand up well um, over time. St. John's Cathedral. Yet another cathedral. St. Joseph Hospital. There's a, that church influence underlying so much of this. His story. His story. St. Leo's. Another church. And a little time for a little entertainment. Tabor Grand Opera House. This is the one that we got, we got to mention in that write-up we checked out at the beginning of the video. There it is there. The Tabor Grand, a very early time period. We are being told this was, was put up. You see a bit of scaffolding here on the roof. Repair. Now, despite its beauty and its history and value to the city, the decision was put forth that this had to be demolished in 1964. So, a mere 80 years, 83 years for this one. Temple Emmanuel. Low windows right to the ground. Snowpack, remember the snowpack, annual snowpack, 60 inches. Again, you see it, windows low to the ground. Temple Emmanuel. Here where the National Amphitheater is that, maybe that's the, the stockyard as well, same building. I think maybe, yeah, you saw it earlier. This is the main drag really giving us the idea of all the theaters existing here. This early time period, probably 30s maybe, um, lit up like a Christmas tree. Would have been quite the place to uh, go visit. Another view from one of the th many theaters in town. 
We saw this train station earlier as well, Union Station. One of the two Union Stations that I've been able to dig up. This is the Trinity Methodist. I find this one interesting because of the cone roof here. Let's take a look at modern day. Let's, there it is. Uh, most of the time you get the roof done with a different material, some sort of copper or tin, um, sometimes wood, I guess, but not really, not on these old worlders. But here we have the stone working its way up to the peak. Like, I don't know, the feat of construction on that, uh, I, f I don't know if you can appreciate the difficulty involved there, especially at, at the location it's at. It's unbelievable. Anyway, here's the rest of it down below. And the inside, the United Methodist Church, there's the massive, massive pipe organ. The Victory Theater, 30 years. Wasn't good enough. Had to get rid of it. Not making sense either, really. Closed in 1940. Why? Hollywood's just coming on strong at that point. Doesn't make sense. All right, now we get to one of the big anomalies. Um, Westminster Castle, supposedly a university. Look at this, where is this? Middle of nowhere? 1891, these gents just saying hello before they get back to the gents club. Look at this thing. And what does it look like today? It's gotta look weathered or, you know, run down. This is 1892, here we are 130 years later. Nope, pristine. Spectacular and pristine. Westminster. Windows. All the way around at ground level. Number 60. 60 inches of snow. Hmm. White City. Part of an amusement park, I believe. Coming to the end here. This would be the Windsor Hotel. Here's a rendering. Here's a photograph. Here's a rendering. Here's a photograph, giving you an idea of uh, a bit of the differences. This, we're told, is the Wolf Hall, built 1890, sometime between 1890 and 1900. Wolf Hall. There's another depiction of it. It's 1809. It looks like an 8, but I think it's 1809. Or, no, sorry, 1909. Um, and in 1909, then, all these trees grown right up tight up against the building so hmm, I don't know how many years does it take for the tree these trees to grow yeah anyway lots of uh, historical anomalies in uh, Denver let's see here this is the 1889 bird's eye view yeah, 1889 remember and we're to expect that all of these were all put up within that time period from the fire, which would be 1863, and then the train linking up with the Transcontinental in 1870, the silver boom, and then 1889. We have all of this infrastructure already firmly in place. So I don't know, what do you think? And just as a quick sidebar, if you made it this far into the video, uh, I didn't really get in depth on the state capitol building, so here's a quick search. Not much to see there. It's just a state capitol building, built like so many of the other state capitol buildings. All right, uh, I thank you for joining me on this um, lengthy um, look into the city of Denver, and I hope you smell the rat. <laughs>